Hi there, this is Max from Iridescent Color and in today's video I would like to introduce you to the new possibilities and features we have in the Hue versus Contrast version 2 DCTL. And if you're not familiar with this tool yet, the basic premise is you've got six hue vectors plus an additional custom hue vector and you can introduce an S-curve style contrast selectively to these individual hue vectors rather than to the whole image. And that way you can really shape and sculpt the contrast in your image and make some colors pop more than others. And the most obvious example for an application of this would be uh, making skin tones pop a little bit more to separate the subject from the surroundings and draw the viewer's attention to the subject. In a shot like this, for example, we can use the new highlight mode with the checkerboard to really get a good idea of what we're um, qualifying here. And then I'm just going to use my custom hue slider here to get the best possible selection of my skin tones. And then I can also try to focus in that qualification a little bit more if I don't want to get as much of these other things here into the selection. And then I can turn off the highlight mode again and use my contrast slider to start dialing in some contrast just on the skin tones. And you can really see how we can make the skin tones pop and really separate the subject from the background and get a lot more attention to the subject by just selectively increasing the, the contrast on the skin tones. Another option that we have here is this chroma slider and this essentially determines how much of the contrast is just applied to the luma component of the image uh, versus the chroma component of the image and if we increase contrast that means all the way to the left we're basically protecting the original level of saturation in the skin and this can maybe feel a little bit more natural and less obvious. Whereas on the other hand, if we introduce more of that contrast to the chroma component of the image as well, that means the colors also pop a little bit more as we introduce, introduce saturation. And that can help us to get even more separation, in this case, between the skin tones and the rest of the image. Another option that we have is this mid-focus slider. And that basically means if I turn on the curve, you can see all the way to the left, we get an S-curve applied to the entire tonal spectrum of the image. Whereas if we narrow this down with the mid-focus, we're just focusing on the slope of these mid-tones. And that way we can get a really subtle and really effective increase of contrast just in those mid-tones. In this case, for example, around where the skin tones live. And then we can also fine-tune this with the pivot if we want a little bit more open skin tones, for example. And there you are, that's the before and the after. And I think this is a really efficient and very clean way to introduce a little bit more pop into the skin tones. And if you're already familiar with version one of this tool, you may already have noticed that now in this version, we finally also have the ability to reduce contrast per hue vector, which gives us even more control over how we shape different parts of our image. And to show you how useful this can be in practice when we're trying to craft a specific aesthetic in our image, uh, I want to have a look at this image and let's try to achieve an almost kind of Wes Anderson-like uh, low contrast pastel -y look that feels soft but still has a lot of color in it. And the way that I would go about this with this tool, for example, is turn the chroma slider all the way down because we want to now reduce contrast without losing saturation. And now we can, for example, use this um, custom hue vector here on a kind of reddish orangey kind of vector and just turn the contrast all the way down. And I can even go further and reduce that mid focus a little bit. And now with just that one slider, you can see we've created a very different look. Now we get this really low contrast, very soft pastel -y look without losing the colorfulness in our image. And as a contrast, we can now use the cyan slider here to determine how much pop we want to have in the ocean behind the model here. We could turn it all the way up to get more ping into the highlights in that water and make it feel very dynamic. Or we could go for an overall soft look by reducing the contrast in the ocean a little bit more as well and get a kind of flatter looking image overall. And as you can see with just these two sliders now, 
we've created a very, very different, but very pleasing aesthetic in our image. And we have been able to introduce a lot of control over the subtleties and the nuances because we can control these individual hue vectors separately. And that was just a very quick overview of the new features and possibilities with the hue versus contrast DCTL. If you have any more questions about this tool or any other tools, feel free to reach out to me. And uh, I thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you again very, very soon.